Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. Or if you're early morning Australia, <laughs> happy Sunday. Anyway, this is a story of a whole bunch of interesting stuff. This is a story. Sometimes the quiet bear market gives you time to think and dig deep and try analyze stuff on a different level. And I'm always trying to find interrelationships between different types of stuff. So this is a story of energy and how energy is power. <laughs> energy is also included in our thoughts, our words, our emotion. And money is also an expression of energy. And that's why this will all be related to Bitcoin somehow. Um, also scarcity, how scarcity equals control, whether food or energy or money. Uh, by the way, the reason I love Bitcoin is because of scarcity. And this is a story of trying to build a pattern between all of those because there's some crazy, crazy stuff going on in the world today. Literally, it is crazy. It's terrifying. It's also fascinating to somebody like me to try figure it out and be on the right side of it when the time comes. First of all, as you know, edutainment, welcome in. The story today, as I mentioned, uh, it gives you time to think. We're watching Europe go through the worst energy crisis in over 50 years. And because of that, there is a lot of dependency on Russia. Russia has them over a barrel. I'll talk about a tweet I did yesterday, which is very well received, which actually prompted me to work on this last night and all today. And the EU is having a very difficult time trying to replace their energy dependency. The stories of a place like Germany shutting down 17 reactors in three months before the invasion of Ukraine. It's like, that's a head scratcher. Why that? And, uh, you know, it's very clear that the EU is dependent on gas. But the U.S. is also dependent on oil and exporting gas. And the stories of the Chinese getting gas from Russia and then reselling it to Europe, it's just, you can't make this up. It's like a bunch of kids in a playground <laughs> trading cards or coins or little cars or whatever else. Anyway, we're going to dig into a whole bunch of this and how energy is the lifeblood of economies and how the world is so energy dependent and a lot more. Again, this is a complex story. I could be wrong, but these are the things that I see. First of all, uh, Gazprom is clearly turning the screws on the EU. A uh, big thank you to Sanjay for sharing this with me. You know, the curb supply, this is the multi-year lows, escalating energy crisis. Basically, the gas has been turned off to Europe. And could we get energy lockdowns next? Well, Germany has already shaved 15% off gas usage already, and they are stocking up supplies as quickly as they can. Um, uh, per redacted as well and stuff I saw, California is telling you to they're going to ban gasoline vehicles in the year 2030 or 2035. And at the same time, they're telling you not to charge your electric vehicle today. It's kind of, again, another head scratcher. <laughs> who, who's, who's saying all this stuff? Let's talk about energy. Um, German power broke through a thousand euros per megawatt hour for the first time ever in history. And that chart is... That chart is even more impressive than any crazy old coin pump could be. But that's separate for now. Uh, other things that are happening, again, because this is all tied to economy, uh, European stainless steel mills are closing down due to the energy crisis because they are very intensive. Same with aluminium, but ten, aluminium tends to be minted in places that have abundant energy, just like Bitcoin. Consider that, again, interrelationship. And we also know the history and the hidden costs of the petrodollar, uh, the world relies on the U.S. dollar and U.S. treasuries. Um, the U.S., I think, dominates 80 to 90 percent of international currency transactions are in dollars. 60 percent of foreign exchange reserves are in dollars. 40 percent of the world's debt is issued in dollars. What would happen if the dollar screwed the pooch? Ta -da. Anyway, uh, but the most important thing is to think about, you know, the old military pact in the past in Saudi Arabia, the United States to protect the dollar and to protect the oil supplies. Again, all related. We've known this for a long time. But let's dig a bit deeper. This is a quote from Seyfedina Moose that stuck in my mind from something he did a while ago, and that was fiat subsidizes dysfunctional energy. Obviously, Seyfedin is a Bitcoin maxi, but thinking about that, it's like, hmm, how? Well, I kind of know how, but I want to kind of play out exactly how that happens. So first of all, we're going to go on a different dimension here, so buckle in. The kinetic world, breaking news. This came out yesterday. Everything came out yesterday. Gazprom shutting down, and then China calls in the U.S. to cancel weapons deal with Taiwan and warns of countermeasures if it goes ahead. Uh, I warned you, this would be scary stuff. But what is all this about? Well, 
I don't know if there's a link, but this is a little bit suspicious. We all know Nancy Pelosi went to Taiwan to secure semiconductors and tell them the U.S. is on their side, but spot the connection. China, Taiwan, USA. Hmm. But why are semiconductors important? Well, this is <laughs> a weaker thread, but I'm going to pull on it anyway. This is an old chart to weave in the connection between energy and power. Again, cryptocurrency mining semiconductor revenue built off of primarily two companies, TSMC and NVIDIA, that make, and a whole bunch of other little companies that make ASICs miners, etc. Just, again, loosely tying in the importance of semiconductors. Could, could there be a time when semiconductors plus energy equals money, i.e. Bitcoin? Well, that's already happening. So let's talk about another angle before we go deeper into this whole energy world. And this will all begin to make sense in a minute. So committing to growth, uh, this is from Derek Jensen. He said back, I think he's a Tahoe writer, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I saw one of his books there a long time ago. And he said, once a nation commits to a growth economy, they've pretty much committed themselves to a perpetual war economy because in order to maintain this growth, they will have to continue to colonize an ever wider swath of the planet and exploit its inhabitants. I would have added resources as well. Enter Putin, enter Pelosi, etc. I'm probably going to get taken down for saying all this, but hey, I'm just pointing out stuff that's out there. Anyway, uh, reminder uh, as well, um, this is a new book that came out from uh, two authors from Johns Hopkins University, and they talk about the peril of peak China. It's very clear that China is beyond its peak. They have birth issues. They have C-19 issues. They have growth issues. Da -da. And that tr can trigger a lot more conflict danger. So the book, I think, is called Danger Zone. I spoke about a danger zone a few days ago as well. The coming conflict with China. Remember, a weak country is more warlike. You push a rat into a corner, they'll attack you. So again, I do believe it's highly unlikely, a less than 20% chance of China invading Taiwan in the next five years. But, and I hope, I hope I'm right. right. So let's talk about Putin. Putin points out, I use a worthless like Fiat. If you're going to see now, we're going to link back to Fiat. This was all over the internet, but it's a very old video. But somehow it got lit up on Twitter today, but it points to the fact that uh, Putin, uh, basically global foreign currency reserves, will move away from the dollar and euro, which have become unreliable. So he's playing tactical 3D chess, five moves ahead of the leaders of Europe and the US probably. According to the IMF, today's global foreign currency reserves contain $7.1 trillion and 2.5 trillion euros. And again, what he doesn't like, what annoys Putin, is he has his precious oil and gas and some other commodities too. And he sells them to Europe and maybe other places. Uh, like the Europe, they print euros, US print dollars. So it's like, why? It seems unfair. I got to work so hard to mine this stuff. I know it's precious. And people are just printing fake money to pay for it. So he wants to get away from that system. Sound familiar, everybody? So let's talk about energy. So dirty energy is still big money. These companies make a fortune despite the global energy crisis. Check out these earnings here. Uh, you can see profits for the first half of the year by energy company in red is 2022 compared to 2021. Can you see the global energy crisis, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, not for these greedy so-and-sos. Uh, wait till you see 2023. It's going to be a lot better. So look at the earnings ExxonMobil, Shell, all triple time what they got last year. And that's just the beginning. But it gets better. Look at this company, Gazprom. 41.75 billion. These guys minted more than all the other energy companies I just showed you. An absolutely crazy bumper year. They are literally printing money like crazy. Let's go a bit further. Let's talk about Putin once again. Big Putin story. But again, any leader could be filling his shoes. So Putin, having stuck the knife in Europe's back now by cutting off the gas... They shut down the main artery. That was a big story yesterday uh, or Wednesday or Thursday. I don't even know which day it is. But governments see this as the latest salvo in Kremlin's economic war on the continent. So, of course, the West implements sanctions and he gets his revenge back. So, again, wars are now being fought much more on a sanction kind of econ economic basis. 
using fiat energy other resources you can see you can see now how things like shortages are triggering rationing knee capping industries economies um again it's just it's just all playing out like well and in fact i think putin warned of this exact situation back in 2018 he said kind of like words to the effect of come at me bro you want to sanction me just try i will win this game that's the danger in dealing with people that are smarter than you are so speaking of knives and russian energy <laughs> hope i don't get in trouble for this but a uh, big thank you to jumba wamba for sharing this um, basically, April 2022, Gazprom Luke Oil took the unusual public stance of speaking out against Russia's war in Ukraine, calling for sympathy for victims, etc. Luke Oil's chairman, Ravil Maganov, died this week after accidentally falling out of the window of a hospital in Russia. And that is also in line with eight other uh, Russian energy executives that have died of suicide or unexplained deaths in the past couple of months. So weird stuff is going on. Hmm, I wonder if it's all related. Now, speaking of war games, these are now energy games. This is what I tweeted yesterday, very well received, and that triggered this video today. Because everybody seems to be interested in exactly what's going on. Not only our friends in Europe who are suffering right now, but also people all over the world. This is not isolated to Europe. This impacts everybody, including the Chinese and you name it, people in the US. So let's talk about sanctions. So the big trigger for a lot of this and what got Putin upset was the sanctions. So Germany and Italy have approved Russian gas payments after the nod from Brussels. Huh, so sanctions are very selective. Some EU states refuse to comply with Russian payment demands. Others approve Russian payments after talks to the EU. And sources say, and diplomats say, guidance is intentionally vague. So talk about having the EU over a barrel. The sanctions clearly are not doing what they're supposed to do. Now let's zoom out. This is from Peter Zihan, and it's a very important map of the world. It kind of maps out two things, where energy is and where energy is used. So if you look at where the energy is, the green, these are natural uh, petroleum basins, and where energy is used is kind of the areas that are lit up. And you can see there is distance between where energy is used and where it actually is. And that is a big problem that needs to be overcome. And there are some problems right now with combinations of things like sanctions and traditional routes to move stuff. So new routes will be required to move this energy from one place to another. And we all know one of the beauties of things like Bitcoin is you can create monetary wealth by moving miners to the source of energy without having to ship it. Ta-da, genius. Uh, with other energy like oil, natural gas that has to be shipped, which is quite cumbersome. Now, in addition, let's have a quick look at the U.S. oil supplies. Again, I'm bouncing all over the place here, but it's all interrelated. U.S. crude inventories are tanking. They are down 27% uh, over a very, very short window of time. That's the largest drawdown ever uh, that I have ever seen and ever on record and per all my charts, etc. So we the total inventory is also down to 2000 level. And the SPR, which is the Strategic Petroleum Reserves, I think is down to the 80s levels. And this is a problem. So what's going to happen next? We'll see. Now, getting back to Bitcoin, this is another interesting one. Every oil company and energy company will become a Bitcoin miner. And this is due to vertical integration and the importance of energy. So again, you're seeing the direct connective tissue here. Every major oil producer is also a Bitcoin miner. If they're not already implementing uh, mining proof of concepts, or at least they operate a Bitcoin mining arm or are invested in one. And the union between oil producers and energy producers and Bitcoin miners is just getting started. How do they do this? For those that don't know, Bitcoin mining consumes creation, the waste that's created from energy creation. So here you can see the typical gas flares, all that energy is burnt, heating up the atmosphere. And with Bitcoin miners and different types of technology that can be parked alongside, it can trap this flare gas, generate energy and create Bitcoin as a result. Wouldn't it be nice to have a couple of those in your backyard? Separate issue. Anyway, um, energy, inflation, and lifeboats. Here we are. So we kind of painted out the picture of kind of energy, power, fiat, the struggle that's happening around the world and how energy has been used as kind of a, a ransom. But there's the other thing that's happening is inflation. 
Now, not only is inflation rampant around the world, but energy inflation is also going through the roof, as we saw with the German electricity prices after them shutting down their uh, nuclear power plants. But will the lifeboat, as I've been talking about for a long time, rise with the incoming tidal wave of energy inflation? I've been talking about Bitcoin being an inflation hedge for a long time. That has not happened. <laughs> but maybe the day will come. Now, Latecomers, I do believe, will flee towards absolute digital scarcity. Again, I started talking about scarcity at the beginning of this video to avoid central bank digital currencies. CBDCs are coming and Bitcoin will offer protection to anyone that seeks it. So this is kind of all related. So obviously energy crisis, more money printing needed, more control. Central bank digital currencies are being tested and very close to being deployed all over the world as we speak. So let's jump into the conclusion. And again, while it's very difficult for me to draw any pinpoint exact timing or when things will actually happen, I do believe change is going to come. I just don't know when. So first of all, uh, energy and money are clearly very much interlinked. And those that create energy and have energy, they don't want to sell it for crappy fiat. Bitcoin network security is at an all-time high despite the bear market. And that uses energy, as you know, but it's typically energy that is uh, abandoned or inaccessible. And that's why mining companies go there. Now, once energy companies and Bitcoin become one, then I believe it's game over. We just don't know when it's going to happen. Now, Bitcoin is perfect money that cannot be manipulated or inflated by governments. This is part of the issue that leaders have who are selling energy. And most important, economies will be those the most important economies will be those that have scarce resources that can be sold for hard assets. What are those hard assets? Well, fiat certainly is not a hard asset. The other thing to remember, um, we spoke about many times before on the show, central bank digital currencies, I believe, will scare people into finding new hard money, whether it be paintings or gold or bullets or <laughs> Bitcoin, or else it'll be the monetary highway to hell. I do believe, especially with the type of stuff that's happening right now with CBDCs in some of the pilot countries where it's being tested. Finally, remember this guy? So uh, Putin is obviously playing his 3D chess with both uh, sticking a knife in the fiat currencies of the euro and the dollar and the petrodollar. He wants to sell his oil and gas for hard money, i.e. gold, precious metals, or Russian currency rubles. And that's what some of the European countries are bending to right now. So he's done selling his precious energy for fiat. US dollar and the euro are at risk. He wants hard assets. And the day Russia and Iran turn on the Bitcoin spigot, well, that'll be an interesting day. Again, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if it does, wow, that'll be impressive. But what else could you use to sell your energy internationally at a fixed price? Again, what I call the petro Bitcoin, if that ever comes. We'll see, we hope. Now, finally, one uh, little piece to consider. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about, <laughs> the, I'll zoom out for this one, the WEF, and are they behind all of this? There's some weird stuff going on in Europe. Uh, EU is changing and using potentially Ukraine and Russia as an excuse. Scarcity equals dependency equals control. Whether food or energy, it doesn't matter. It could potentially be laying the groundwork for something scarier. People talking about Klaus and the WEF and the Great Reset. You know, I'm wearing my tinfoil hat right now, but when I see the type of crazy stuff happening in the world today, it makes you think, hmm, wow, these guys may be better planners than I thought. I don't know. But finally, some final thoughts. Showing the link between energy, power, fiat, and digital energy, it's clearly there. I'm not sure when, but it has started. And the gig is up for fiat as we know it. And what governments are doing and what they've been doing for a long time is, obviously, now that people are smarter, they will no longer be able to confiscate wealth of their citizens by debasing the currency or inflating their way out of debt. Very simply put. So that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> This is hopefully the most knowledge per minute. We covered a lot of ground here and I'm trying to, it's not a perfect tapestry, but it's pretty close. And this is just a microcosm of some of the stuff that's happening just over the last 48 hours, which is pretty terrifying. So I hope 
The only thing that comes to fruition is oil and Bitcoin get closer and energy gets denominated in Bitcoin as we go forward because we've seen what fiat does and it's not good. And inflation is the silent thief. So with that, everybody, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We're going to talk about some interesting topics that are top of mind for you all, including <laughs> civil unrest and what it means for certain investments by certain people. Again, it's a weird week, but this is stuff as investors we have to know. So thank you all. Thank you to the mods in the chat, and I'll see you all tomorrow.